Hello, everyone. So we're going to go ahead and go over the next section, section 10-2, which is all about tangent lines. So the one thing you may, uh, you may have seen these before in previous grades or anything like that, but what you need to know about a tangent line, it's essentially a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. And we call this the point of tangency. So you notice over here, we have this tangent line on this circle. It kind of crosses the circle at only one point right there. If you think about any other kind of line that, um, you know, for a circle or that crosses a circle, let me just give you an example here on a sticky note. Here you have a line, right, that crosses the circle. But notice how this, this crosses two points on the circle. Here you have another line crosses the circle, but it crosses two points on the circle. What makes tangent lines very uh, unique is that they only cross the circle at one point. That's an example of a tangent line. Here's another example of a tangent line. Here's another example of a tangent line, right? So, and really, really, uh, it, it's they're easy to spot because a tangent line on a circle, essentially what it looks like, it just looks like it's just kind of like a line that's touching the edge of the circle, right? Or kind of like a line laying on top of the circle or just kind of like, like I said, just along the edge of the circle. So but they, they're really easy to spot when you see them in problems. So. And that's what we have to understand about a tangent line. And then, of course, that single point that it crosses, we call this the point of tangency. All right, uh, we already have it right there. So now the, uh, the, now, the main property you have to understand about tangent lines is that a line that is tangent to its, uh, is a line is tangent to a circle if and only if it is perpendicular, so perpendicular to a radius drawn on the point of tangency. So if you think about it, if I look at my circle, right? Well, we understand that the radius is really just from the center to any point on the circle, right? If I were to connect my radius to any of these points of tangencies, right? What will always happen is that you will, it will always create a 90 degree angle right there, right? Anytime I connect a point of my tangent line, to the radius, it's always going to form a 90 degree angle there. So you have to make sure you don't forget that. And a lot of problems can be created with that. Like if you look over here, notice how we have this tangent line and it's connected to that radius, we have a 90 degree angle. This tangent line connected to the radius creates a 90 degree angle. And what you'll notice with all of these problems is a lot of times you're going to end up doing some kind of trigonometry or something having to do with right triangles. All right. So Let's just kind of look at these two examples just to kind of see um, what we're talking about. So obviously we have this circle, we have this radius, and then we have this, uh, this tangent line. And again, it's a tangent line. If I were to extend this out forever, I would have a tangent line right there, right? So they're asking you, or they're not, they didn't ask you, but they're pretty much implying here, figure out what the value of X is from this figure, right? So if I look at this, now I have a right triangle. And hopefully you guys remember that if I ever have a right triangle and I have two sides, but I'm, and I need to figure out what the third missing side is, hopefully you guys remember to use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? C obviously being the one that's opposite of the 90 degree angle. And then it doesn't matter which one is a or b between seven and 19. So when I go ahead and set up my formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out what my value of X is. So I have seven squared plus 19 squared is equal to C squared. So I know that this is 49. I know that 19 squared, grab my calculator. I know that 19 squared is 361 is equal to C squared. So when I add, so now when I, when I add these two values together plus 49, I get 410 is equal to C squared. So now if I want to get C by itself, I just take the square root of both sides and I finally get that C is equal to 20.2, let's do two decimal places, 25, all right, 20.25, all right. So this is, as, this is as basic as the examples would get for this, uh, for this topic. Now, if we look at example two though, right? Here we have, again, another right triangle, and we're miss we want to figure out what the missing side is, right? So the thing is, you have to be careful with this, with how this is drawn. Already, I've taught this lesson, and, I, and every single time I have students say the same thing. Oh, well, the length of my C value is equal to 7, 
right? Because that's the length of my hypotenuse because seven is right there. But now you guys have to think about this. Does that make any sense? It doesn't. Because if you think about it, how is the hypotenuse shorter than the length of this side of the triangle 11, right? That's not possible. So the thing you have to understand is that this seven represents only this portion of the triangle from the edge of the circle all the way up until K. This is what seven is. So the thing is, you got to figure out what is this, um, this other part of the, of the hypotenuse, right? And this is where you have to start, you know, think, and this is where how, knowing those properties of circles is very helpful. First of all, one of the things that you should remember about a circle is no matter where you draw your radius, it's the same value everywhere, right? No matter how you draw your radius. So here we pretty much uh, see that the radius is equal to 11. So if the radius over here is 11, wouldn't this radius also be 11? So now we know that that's 11. So essentially what we need to understand is that this entire length from L to K is going to be seven and 11 together, which is 18, okay? So now we have the right triangle that we can work with. So we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is the hypotenuse. So we have X squared plus 11 squared is equal to 18 squared, all right? So we have, let's see, X squared plus 11 squared is 121. 18 squared, let's see, that's 324, right? So if I get X squared by itself, I subtract 121 from both sides. So minus 121 oh, is equal to 203, square root both sides. And we finally get X is equal to 14.25, okay? Good. So again, be mindful of that and make sure that it just kind of makes sense. The they didn't give you the entire length of that hypotenuse. They only gave you a piece of it and the other piece you can figure out by understanding that it's the same as the radius. All right, so let's, so if we turn the page around, now this is a more complicated version of the problem. This is where we really have to dig deep into our algebra knowledge, all right? So first of all, again, we have another situation where it doesn't make sense. We have 90 degrees there because the radius connected with the tangent line is 90 degrees. So we have a right triangle here, but it does not make sense for the hypotenuse to be 10 if one of the legs is 20, right? However, we do know that this little portion right there, right, of the hypotenuse is, equal, is, the, is the same thing as the radius on this side. So that means that the radius is X right there, right? Now, there's a bit of a problem. This is gonna get a little bit more complicated because now if I did A squared plus B squared equals C squared, well, C is no longer just a nice easy number to work with. It's actually gonna be an algebraic expression of X plus 10. So when we set this up, all right, and this is for my, for my geometry regular students, I'm probably not gonna include anything like this on a test or we wouldn't include anything like this on a test, but for the honors kids, for sure, you're gonna see something like this. So when I set up my Pythagorean theorem, I'm gonna have X squared plus tw uh, 20 squared, X squared plus 20 squared is equal to X plus 10 squared, okay? And so now we go ahead and work this out. So we have X squared plus 20 squared is 400. And now with this, the most common mistake that I see, even, even with the calculus students is that People say, oh, well, can I distribute the exponent inside of both of those terms on the inside and it's X squared plus 100? No, you cannot do that. Whenever you have an expression raised to a power, you need to expand this out as X plus 10 times X plus 10, right? And now, and there's that famous phrase that we probably all hate is FOIL. So we got to remember to FOIL this now. So we get the first terms, multiply them, outer terms plus 10X inner terms plus another 10x, and then the last term plus 100, right? So really x plus 10 squared is actually gonna be x squared plus, then I combine the middle terms, 20x plus 100, all right? And sure, you know, whenever you wanna solve a quadratic equation, you gotta get all of your terms on one side set it equal to zero, but this one's simple enough because if you, if you just subtract x squared from both sides, right? They'll cancel out and you don't have to, now it's, now it's just a linear algebra equation that you have to solve for. So then this becomes 400 down here is equal to 20X plus 100. 
right? So now what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and subtract 100 from both sides. So you get 300 is equal to 20x. Divide both sides by 20. And finally, you get that x is equal to 15. All right. And it works itself out nicely. Luckily, this is one of those problems where we don't have to like factor and solve for two variables of L or two values of X. This is just straightforward and you only have your X value to be 15. All right, again, this is a much more advanced version of these problems that, um, that you'll see. Now, for example, four and example five, right? That kind of ties into this, uh, to the second part of the notes. So it says over here, if you have two segments from the same external point that are tangent to the circle, then they are congruent, all right? So essentially what they're saying is this. If I were to get any circle, right? Let me just draw a little circle here. And I drew a tangent line, maybe like this. Uh, just pretend that's touching the circle. If I were to get any other tangent line, let me, you know, whether maybe like over here somewhere like that. If I extended these tangent lines out, completely, they'll probably intersect at a point out there, right? That's just going to happen. Anytime you have two lines that are not in, that are not parallel, they will extend out and they will intersect at some point. What you need to understand is when that happens, the, um, the distance between that point of the point of tangency of both for both of them and that point that they intersect that this side is going to be the same as that side. And that's what they're saying in these notes. Right. If you have two tangent lines, which you know these are tangent because they form a, a 90 degree angle with the radius. If you have two tangent lines that they uh, go over here and connect to a point out there, then this segment AB is congruent to segment CB. Right. So that kind of that kind of helps make these problems um, really simple to answer. So right here, you have two tangent lines, and you know another thing, you know they're tangent lines because if I connect the radius to both of them, they form 90 degrees. Right, a lot of times they'll show that in the problem, but you're just, it's, that's just assumed in this problem. So they're saying find the length of PQ. Well, again, you know that this side is going to be congruent to that side. And when two things are congruent in math, we can mathematically set them equal to each other. So I have 14X minus 13 is equal to 8X plus five, All right? And now we just turn this from a geometry problem to an algebra problem. I subtract 8X from both sides. I'm going to add 13 to both sides at the same time. And now I just have 6x is equal to 18 divided by 6, x equals 3, right? Now, of course, you got to be mindful. They're not asking for the value of x. What they're asking for is the length of pq. So now we're going to go ahead and plug x equals 3 into our um, pq expression. So we know that pq is equal to 14x, which we now know is 3, minus 13. And when we work this out, this becomes 42 minus 13, which is 29. And that's our answer. All right. And then finally, really the last thing you need to know about tangent lines, at least in this class and for the FSA, is this right here. It says over here, if a polygon is circumscribed around a circle, then all sides are tangent, right? So you can just kind of see, like you have a circle over here, and if you try to draw a, like a, any sort of like you know polygon where the circle fits in there perfectly, then all of these sides of the polygon are tangent to that circle, right? You can just visually see that right there in front of you. Now, the but the main property you have to understand about this, right, is that don't you pretty much have like the same situation here, but like in three different locations, tangent line. Tangent line connects to a point. Does that mean that this side is the same as that side? Same thing over here. Another tangent line connected with another tangent line. That makes this side the same as that side. And same thing over here. Tangent line and tangent line that kind of like, you know, meet at some point, uh, some external point out here. This line is going to be the same value as that line. Right? So you can actually, the, they'll, the FSA will, of course, find some way of asking you this style of question. So if I look at this uh, at example five, they're saying find the perimeter of this triangle out here. Well, you see the situation where you have a circle kind of like inside of this and it's um, the triangle is circumscribed around that circle. And you have like, you know, these all of these are tangent points or points of tangency. So, and, and you know, hopefully you remember that the perimeter is the sum of all the sides of a figure, of all sides of a figure. 
right? So we would need to know what is the length of this side, what is the length of this side, and what is the length of that side, right? So unfortunately, we only have pieces of each of those sides. So if I know that this side right here is 16, well, shouldn't that be the same as this side on this, over here? So this side is going to be the same as that side. So if this is 16, then this is also 16 right there. And we kind of do that for all of the other parts of this figure. So we have this side is congruent to that side. So if this is 11, then that's also 11. And then we have this side is the same as that side. So if this over here is 9.5, then this is also 9.5. So now that we have all the missing pieces, we can go ahead and say, okay, well, the entire length of this triangle is 16 plus 9.5. Hopefully I don't mess this up, but I'm pretty sure that's 25.5. 11 plus 9.5 gives us the length of this side, which is going to be 20.5. And then 11 plus 16 gives us the length of this side of the triangle, which we know is 27. So if I wanted to know the perimeter of this entire triangle, I'm gonna add up all of the sides. So I have the perimeter is equal to 27 plus 25.5 plus 20.5. Uh, let's see, I know that these two pretty much give me 46. 46 plus 27 is 73. All right. So there you go. That's pretty much all you would need to know for um, tangent lines of a circle. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask any of your teachers or me or whoever's around. We'll be more than happy to help you. Take care. Good luck.